Hello friends, now something I used to do quite a lot on this channel is talk about aquarium products. I'm a very active consumer and I buy a lot of aquarium stuff and at some point uh, while making videos I decided it would be interesting to discuss those things and a lot of people seem to agree. There are a couple of things in here I haven't tried yet that I'm going to unbox and we'll talk about. There's a couple of things that I've thrown the box away but I have implemented right now and I can show you how it's working. I've got at least one thing I need to reevaluate and uh, tell you my new opinion on it. And a couple of things we've talked about before, but it's been a long time and I thought I'd bring it up again because it's pretty neat. There's going to be a little bit of an update in this too as we go back to the uh, anoxic fluval flora that I just set up a couple of weeks ago. I bought this glass uh, lily pipe. It's the inlet pipe that has the... Uh, it's got a surface skimmer on it and then the bottom has like a little place where the water can come in through the water column. Now if you remember when I did the 43 gallon, I set this up in a special way so it could interact with my under gravel filter. And I wanted to do something similar here. Something that's been happening a lot with my, uh, with my fluval flora is I get a lot of surface film. And I really wanted to do something about that. So I went out and picked this thing up on Amazon. Uh, I had to kind of... Uh, engineer it a special way. <laughs> so the bigger version of this that I used on the 43 gallon uh, fit almost exactly into the the tube that comes up from the from the under gravel filter. This one doesn't really do that so I ran the tube up from the under gravel filter up a ways and then I put something on the bottom of of this glass to kind of go down towards the canister filter. Now because they're exposed and shrimp can get in there and stuff I've also taken a really really uh, porous sponge and kind of shoved them in there uh, discreetly. It is super porous and it's very thin, like I didn't use much of the material at all, but it should be enough to kind of keep them out but also let a little bit of flow come through there. As you know, you want the flow to be sort of restricted and slow anyway, but uh, it's going to be restricted at the bottom. Uh, there'll be some openings in the middle that it's going to further kind of decrease the amount of suction on, the, on that hose, and it's going to be open at the top pulling stuff from the surface which again reduces the suction overall across all the different areas. I put that in about a week ago uh, to help keep my shrimp safe from the surface skimmer which tends to grab things like shrimp. Uh, I added a little bit of window mesh. Uh, this is window screen mesh. Uh, I tried to use the knitting stuff like the cross stitch mesh but it was a little too heavy. Uh, going with the window screen mesh seemed to work really well though. Uh, you can make a little block all the way around there and that'll just keep things from getting stuck in there. Well, it won't get keep things from getting stuck on the outside, but it'll definitely uh, discourage fish and shrimp from swimming into it and then ending up in your filter. I think next we'll probably cover some bad news too. So uh, recently I did a video for this, uh, the Hagar water changer. And you know, the first time I used it, it actually wasn't bad, but I discovered kind of an issue. Uh, with the connector parts. So if you look right here the way it connects it just connects like so many other hoses do where you put it on here this kind of goes onto the hose uh, and then you put the hose on the little barb at the end there and then that slides down the hose and locks in. The problem with this is uh, if that hose especially on this end as you're manipulating it and moving it around, the hose that it came with was just a little too thin. And that will cause this to come loose and start spraying in your hand, which is just uh, you know, no bueno. <laughs> I really love the copper uh, connection, but the same problem is on the other side of this too. And if that hose moves around too much um, inside of that thing, it will spray. Now the other side isn't as bad and, I, and I've used some clamps to kind of make sure that that hose doesn't get jostled or, any, or moved around at all. Uh, but I've noticed, especially when I'm putting it away or something like that if, if that, if that thing gets bent, it can come right out, like literally right out. Now Hagar, if you're watching this, to fix that, you just need a slightly thicker hose. Now I don't know if this will 100% fix that. But I do have, I have a different hose, and when I put it on here, it is a really tight fit. Like, and it, all it is is the walls of this hose are just a little bit thicker than, the, than what they used for this original kit. And if you put it on here with this thing, I believe that it's going to be a much more solid connection at the end. 
So if you've already bought one of these and you're having that problem, what I would recommend is maybe get like a hose extender at some point and put, uh, put one of these, like a thicker version of that hose at the very end, like cut off a three or four foot section and just put it at the air, very end, especially, uh, especially right here. And the reason is this one in particular, this thing is going to get moved all around a lot. Like you're going to leave it in the side of your tank or you're going to want to be digging in the substrate with it and doing all kinds of stuff. So you're going to be moving around with that. So this connection uh, just doesn't work. It might work with a thicker thing. The optimal, the optimal way to do it is probably uh, more similar to the way that um, Python does theirs. Now Python has a special little extra little plastic fitting that goes on the end that really locks that hose in and keeps it from coming out, especially on the other side. Uh, a little scenario like that would, would be uh, far superior to uh, just putting it in like you do a regular hose. Now, as far as the rest of the product, like the plastic and all that, and the way they did the inside and of this and stuff, I think it's great. Uh, I, but the hose, I, I think the critique really is that the hose just isn't quite thick enough to make a really solid connection in here that can't be messed up by manipulating it back and forth. I did take that video down. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do once I kind of discovered that this wasn't what I thought it was or, or as good as I thought it was. I'd be curious to know what you think I should do about it. I mean, should I uh, take that same, I've got the same video there. I could just film a new ending to it and re-release it or, uh, or what, or just like let it go. I'm not sure what I should do. So I'll leave that up to you or let me know down below. I have one bizarro thing and I'm hoping that you all won't get too mad at me because um, I don't, I don't, it was a Facebook ad. And so I don't know how to get more of these, but uh, what we have here is like a little chopper and this fits on uh, the end of your thumb. So, and it's made for like gardening. So like if you prune, like when I reach in my, I say like a lot. So when I'm trimming plants in my aquarium, a lot of times I'll, I'll just reach my thumb in and kind of pinch it off. Well, this has like a, a little thumb guard. It's like a hard plastic here and then a thin plastic here that kind of, or a, a rubbery plastic kind of helps it hold on to there. And then you've got like a metal fingernail. Uh, this is also great if you're a painter for cleaning out your palettes and stuff. But uh, yeah, you've got a nice little, and it's not sharp, it's not super sharp, but it's a nice little knife. So when you're in there, like, I don't know, you've got some Anubius or something and you want to split in half, you can just pinch it. It came with all these little rubberized finger things for the other side. And it was one of those things too where they're like, buy three and get a discount. So I've got a couple of these. One's at my paint table, one's up here, and I've got one downstairs just in case I, a random pruning session starts. I've used it a few times. It's not, it's not always 100% uh, useful, but it, it's definitely different and unique. And I just wanted to show you. So last week I made the tiny island tank and uh, I decided I wanted to put a heater in it, so I bought this. Uh, this is by Siche, and it's their smallest heater. It's a little, what is it? Uh, it's for a 5 to 10 gallon tank. It's a 20 watt heater. And I'm going to put this in here. Uh, I'm doing it in part because I want the, I think if the water was warmer in there, it would generate more humidity and kind of um, bring up the plants. There's nothing living in there except for a couple of snails that made it through somehow probably off the plants i didn't clean but the humidity doesn't seem to be enough to kind of keep it really more the the island like really wet and moist all the way at the top so i'm wondering if maybe i put something in there that generates a little bit of heat uh if i can change that so okay we're over here at the island tank and we're going to take a look at the jolly here uh this is the smallest of these and one thing it comes with are, are these stickers so if you want to add a little bit of camouflage, that, you know, either one of those actually would probably <laughs> be pretty good for camouflage. Let's see here. Of course, it comes with some instructions and an uh, uh, inspection sticker. This is something you never see. This is a little cable management thing where you can kind of wrap your cables all up together. Uh, that's what I actually have on the back of here. And I, I think I'll implement here because I'll have a few cables coming out the back. Pretty decently long cable. That's good. Has a little suction cups here that we can go ahead and put in, like so. 
I think this is going to be pretty well hit. It's a nice subtle thing. So it's just a nice little tube there. Has an indicator light at the top uh, to help let you know. I don't know if I'll be able to even see that too well, but we'll see. And, uh, you know, I think maybe I'll pick the rocks here. All right. Just kind of slide that down. Yeah. I don't know how effective that'll be. Well, it looks a lot less like a heater now. That's for sure. And the, the rock sort of matches this gray rock in here. So maybe that'll work out. So I'm just going to pop this in the back. And I'll let you know how it does. Alright. And here's that cable management stuff I was talking about. You have to get it started. Uh, so you get it started around the cord and you just kind of keep going. And the plastic is going to bind itself kind of back together. And that will keep these cords nice and tidy. No zip ties or anything. Nothing to get knotted up. But you got a nice little braid <laughs> to keep your stuff together. All right, I think, I think I'll just go like this. All right, so next on the line is uh, power sand. So this is very difficult to get. Uh, well, it's not difficult to get, but you can only get it about one place. And uh, this will not be in my Amazon shopping list because it's just not there. I wish it was. I've used this before. I used this on the Spec 16 gallon. I'm gonna use it again when I redo this tank here. Uh, that's probably going to be my next project. I really didn't feel like going into it this week. So, <laughs> no more projects for, uh, give me a couple of weeks to like calm down. So this is an ADA product and it goes in the very bottom layer of your substrate. And if you're familiar at all with the ADA products, they have, uh, they have all these powders and different things that enhance the bioactivity and make it uh, a more accommodating environment for plants is a lot of advanced stuff and it's really expensive powders and there's like a, a whole series of them what they've done is they've combined that into a very porous substrate that you can put on the very bottom to kind of replace putting all those powders and stuff this was fairly expensive i'm trying off the top of my head i don't remember and i'm not sure if i blocked it out or if i don't want holly to hear but the, <laughs> this is kind of expensive this is enough to do a 20 gallon tank which is a little bit less than that but um I, it should work what's interesting about that project that i'm going to do is it's going to be another anoxic project we'll talk more about that in a second yep but i'm excited to use this in combination with the amazonia which i've talked about a lot uh those two things together uh, they do great I, my 16 gallon it's been going for uh, quite a few years with just those these two things if you want to know how long this stuff works, you know, in combination with Amazonia, you can look at my Spec 16 gallon. Uh, that one was made with that, that exact same combo that I'm talking about, this and Amazonia. And it's still going great. In fact, it's still like uh, producing lots and lots of growth on all my plants. So uh, definitely a winning combo. All right, and we're back into the uh, Hagar land again. Now, I have not used these products, so caveat on that uh, and what this is I accidentally bought this one and then I was like oh that's too big and I bought uh, the smaller version but what these are are submersible lights so these are lights that can be uh, like if you were looking for an upgrade for maybe your uh, flex 15 gallon like if you want to put something else in there uh, this is a great possibility for that so th this is fully waterproof it could go down in the water if you needed it to or it can it's going to be just fine like stuck either with the suction cuts probably wouldn't work too much too well for too long on a lot of different scenarios but if it's on glass it would work just fine what makes these lights unique is that they are uh, a 24 hour light that means it's got a, a ramp up and ramp down i haven't played with these at all uh, look forward to a follow-up video on this to find out. This one that I'm going to implement, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one yet. Uh, this one I'm going to implement inside the steampunk tank. And I've actually, for some reason, been waiting to open it and do that until I made this video. YouTube life is a weird life. But they come with a, a power supply, like so. 
Uh, this one, I, its power supply is over there somewhere. And they come with a light wrapped delicately like that. They've got these handy dandy little brackets so that you're, uh, look very sturdy. And it uh, looks like it's going to hold it real on, on real well. Uh, of course you can pull those off if you need to. And they just snap back on and they move to put them in the optimal position and none of, and they don't block the light in any position that they're in so that's that's great. Uh, this is going in the steampunk tank and what it's going to do is it's going to add a uh, a ramp up ramp down light. So far my favorite Hagar product has got to be the 24 7 light but I really really love that light on the no filter aquarium which by the way is doing good except for the shrimp dying like all my shrimp died and I put some other fish and stuff in there, but everything else looks great. The plants are doing good. The algae's going away. Uh, say la vie. So this is going to add a ramp up, ramp down feature uh, to the steampunk aquarium. And I'm excited to add it in there. Uh, what I would have liked a little bit more is if I could angle this. Because uh, it's going to go in sideways and I really kind of need it to go in like at a 45 degree angle. So. All right, so what makes this light a little bit unique, and especially from the last one I used, is it's uh, it's got this dual timer. Uh, this light, of course, does have a, many colors. There's a like a power M here. I guess that means manual. But you can cycle through the different colors and kind of get a sense of all the different things or appearances this can take, depending on what you might need uh, for a mood or something like that, if it's like a decorative thing. Or if you just want to grow plants, you know, you can go to full spectrum. If you double click, it goes all the way back. Well, it's supposed to go all the way back, I thought. Maybe it's the other one. <laughs> there it goes. So now we're back on white, and it's actually really, really bright in there. It's, uh, it's kind of neat. My Anubis is looking a little bit yellow. I didn't, I couldn't even tell before. So what this has too is a dual timer. So if you want to put this, if I wanted to put this back on my timer, and uh, and just use it that way, I can. Or I can set it right here, uh, and this, you can set it for six, 10, or 12 hours, and there's little lights that indicate uh, what you're gonna choose at the top. Is it blinking? And uh, you can choose the intensity of the light too. You can turn it down or cycle it back up. And now you've got your light set up. Now, if you want to use the 24 hour timer, uh, you can use it down here. So it's also got this 24 seven. So what this is going to do is utilize some of those other colors and uh, give it a kind of a sunrise and sunset sort of feel and be super bright like this in the afternoon, you know, at mid noon. But what you have to do with this one is set the time. It is 12 o'clock here. So I'm going to press it once, I think it's 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. So now I've set the time, it's 12 o'clock on the dot here, so that works out great. <laughs> and I've set the time and now it's going to just go through the cycle mode and it controls the light and everything else. That's all you need to do. You literally just set the time. It looks like it goes 8, 10, 12, uh, 15, 18, 22 uh, in that 24 hour light cycle. And that's it. I'm just going to put this away and try it out. I'll let you guys know how this works out in the future. I, I really like the intensity and stuff. It's nice and bright in here. My coolie loaches and stuff hopefully will appreciate the, the dimming up and down. They get a lot of that because there's this is kind of uh, clear at the top. And of course, you know, they, they can see the ambient light in the room. And, and I have it right here in a window. So we'll try this out and see how it does. I, I do like how much brighter it is in here. I, I think that that's really neat. And uh, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that definitely helps a lot. It's been hard to photograph this tank because it was sort of dark inside of here. And then, of course, really bright out here on the other side. And then the wood has these dark tones too. So that's neat. It really glows in there. I like it. I've been setting up a lot of aquariums lately. And I like this product a lot. This is a Activate. Uh, there's a fresh water and the salt water version of this. So what this is is a bacteria additive. This... Uh, this supplement has a lot of claims, including helping to cycle new tanks, uh, helping with tanks that maybe you're having some water quality problems and stuff, probably around 
uh, die off from bacteria and stuff like that. So I, I use this especially with a new tank, but anytime I'm doing like heavy maintenance on the filter or something like that, it's really handy to uh, throw a generous amount of that in. Just remember to shake it first because some of the uh, ingredients coalesce on the bottom if it sits for a while. And also remember to check the expiration date. Uh, products like this do expire. They don't last forever. So be sure to check that when you're looking into this product. But this one, I really like. There's a lot of products, by the way, that do that same thing. But uh, this one I is at my local store and I use it all the time. All right, and I've got a box from Aquarium Co-op. Now, it has been a minute since I got a Cory box in. Uh, but he sent me this. You can tell, see, it's got its own tape. You know, you know you've arrived when you have your own tape. So I've already opened this, of course, and we're going to take a look inside. And I've got a boat key. Now that's super handy, like if you're doing a water change and you got your keys and they fall out of your hand and you need them to float. <laughs> Obviously, it's just kind of a fun promo item from from uh, Aquarium Co-op and Cory. It's a squishy. Uh, this is a floating keychain. So this keychain will hold up uh, some number of keys. And I know this because of boating. Uh, if, you, if you ride in boats very often, then you probably know about it too. Oh, also I have a really cool shirt. Let's take a look. It says it's tie-dye. Huh. What an awesome, what an awesome tie-dye shirt. Now it's a little wrinkly, but because it's been folded up and it's new, of course, uh, hopefully it's not making it too hard to see. And my lights seem really bright on there. But it is a really nice uh, tie-dye shirt, but the color difference is, is kind of subtle, which I like. It's not, it's interesting without being like overly vibrant. Uh, let's see what it looks like on. Nice. I like it. That's a good fit. Uh, thank you very much, Corey. I really appreciate you sending that. And your continued support is amazing. I really appreciate you. It's a good fit. Feels good. It's brand new, but it doesn't smell like uh, terrible. So I like it. Good shirt. And you can get these on uh, Corey's webpage for his store. All right, so next I want to call out this book that I got. Uh, th I actually got this book during the fish swap. And what it is, it's called uh, Snorkeling Hidden, River, Hidden Rivers of Southern Appalachia. It's a photographic snorkel guide to, the to sites and species and gear by Casper Cox. So this book's kind of near and dear to me. I thought it was really, really interesting. And uh, it's about fish from my area specifically. And uh, I thought it would be neat to kind of get to know more about the stuff that's right around me. It's funny when you get into all these exotic fish, and I'm like, I got fish from South America, I got fish from Africa, I got fish from uh, Japan and Taiwan, but nothing from here. <laughs> and there's a lot of interesting fish just like right around my general area. Now in Tennessee, it's actually illegal to go and collect uh, these fish, but uh, it is interesting to know about them. And uh, you could even become more involved if there's some species that they're trying to, to breed up maybe or to build up the numbers on. That would be kind of cool. So I picked this book up and it was, it's great. So I've got a few new fish to talk about too. Uh, nothing super fancy. I've got a, a really neat catfish. Uh, this little twig looking catfish is, uh, it's extremely boring, but, but really interesting to see. Like I, he never moves very much, but when he, he seems to always be out. Uh, I bought some of these before from Rachel and I think her remark on them was, they're really stupid. <laughs> So you kind of have to watch that you don't endanger them because they're not going to move when they should. And they'll let other fish chew on them if, if, if you have aggressive fish. They'll just let them chew on them without fighting back or moving or anything. Another fish I got is a high fin platy. Uh, I got this to throw into the 15 gallon to kind of cycle it up or to kind of help keep that cycle going and make sure there's enough uh, fish material. Plus, my wife really loves pat platies and I've always wanted a, a shark platy as I like to call them. I've also moved most of my shrimp from the bucket that I was using to sort of quarantine them after I did their little salt water dip and put them into the tank. Uh, the numbers on that tank are looking great. 
and it seems to be doing really well. So hopefully it'll it'll continue to. Another creature I picked up was an Amano shrimp. I bought, uh, they, my store had a really good size uh, Amano shrimp there. So I picked it up and brought it in. And I've added a couple of more shrimp from this tank down there. I'm slowly taking things out of this tank and migrating them off to, into other aquariums. So that tank's doing good as kind of a mini update. And that kind of brings me to the very last product that I wanted to show you about. So as you know, I've been using these under gravel filters and they're kind of, they're, they're the same under gravel filters from the 70s. They're actually kind of difficult to find in a lot of places too because they're not fashionable. Uh, and these aren't either, but they are very cheap. Another word for an under gravel filter is a plenum. And I discovered these little plastic pieces that can be fit together. You can just slide them together like this. They have little tabs on the side and they have tabs on this side too. So you could actually maybe go this way. I'm not fully certain what these raised areas are, but there are little tabs on the side and you can use those to fit them together in different configurations and make different size plenums. Uh, what this doesn't have, is a way to bring the water up. So that would be something that would be, have to be engineered if I, if I did go with something like this. But not, but there are a few schools of thought on not putting anything to go up, just leaving that, simply leaving that space under there. And I, it almost seems like that's what they had in mind with these. These do have tabs on the end and it looks like you could uh, use that to extend these. Out a little bit further if you wanted to maybe a couple of different kinds of shapes or deal with some weird awkward shapes but they do fit together in a number of different ways I found these on Amazon I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm gonna be using them or not but I wanted to point them out uh, just in case you're interested so if you're interested in a lot of these different things, uh, there'll be links down below to my Amazon store where a lot of this and a lot of other things that I've picked in the past uh, reside. They are affiliate links. I do get a small benefit from, from that when you shop there. Uh, don't use that as an incentive to shop there. Make your own choices. <laughs> Find the best deal possible. But if you want more information and you want to see what Amazon has to offer, I do have links to them even though they're evil. Honestly, if I had my druthers, I wish you'd go to your local fish store or maybe a swap meet for a local club, but that's just not possible for everybody. So uh, I make no judgments. That's all I have for you this week. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.